Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. After dozens of Rockton residents report health conditions following the ChemTool fire, a survey is launched to track symptoms. Fourth of July weekend kicks off today for some people, but before you get carried away with amateur fireworks displays, firefighters and medical experts have warnings. It's getting them away from the screens. They're getting out and about. Local students trade in their tablets for wands at a magical summer camp. Organizers say the lessons are about more than wizardry. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Public health administrators want to hear from Rockton residents experiencing symptoms after the ChemTool fire. The Winnebago County Health Department is conducting a 15-minute survey. June 14th, a plume of smoke covered the village. Residents within a one-mile radius of the plant were evacuated for five days while the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency tested air, soil, and water. Now, weeks later, Dr. Sandra Martell with the Health Department says Rockton is in the health monitoring phase. The survey will ask residents what type of debris they came in contact with, what adverse symptoms they may be experiencing, and it will also ask about the health effects on pets and livestock. I want to be clear with the public that this survey is not intended to be used as a medical screening tool. If you need health care, you need to contact your primary care provider or seek health care. The survey is intended to really understand the symptoms that you experienced. There should be no assumption that the survey is implying that their hazardous materials have been identified in the area. You can find more information and a link to that survey at mystateline.com. A pedestrian is dead after being hit by a car in Belvedere last night. It happened just before 10 on Newburgh Road near Royal Avenue. Police say the person had already passed away by the time they got on scene. The victim's name has not been released. Investigators are in contact with the car's driver. They're still looking into what happened. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden traveled to Surfside, Florida today to visit the scene of that deadly condo building collapse. Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson reports on the president's visit as Rashad keeps you connected to the nation's capital. On the ground in Florida today, President Biden announced that the federal government will cover 100% of the costs related to rescue efforts for the first 30 days. The whole nation is mourning with these families. They see it every day on television. They're going through hell. One week after the devastating building collapse in Surfside, Florida, President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden met with survivors and first responders. What you're doing here is incredible. During a briefing with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and local leaders, the president pledged a full response from the federal government. That's why we decided to cover, for example, 100% of the search and rescue cost for the first 30 days. Governor DeSantis praised the federal government for its cooperation in assisting with fallout. We've had no bureaucracy. DeSantis says first responders will also need help in the weeks to come. We're going to need some mental health support for some of the folks who've been in that rubble. In Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Cava says they are working around the clock to get answers for families impacted by the collapse. We are going to be examining every inch of this catastrophe with the full might of the federal, state, and local government to do so. The White House believes an investigation is needed to determine how to improve structures and prevent future catastrophic failures. Search efforts have paused at the condo building over fears that the rest of the building could collapse. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. Rockford earns a new title for its commitment to the community to promote trustworthy businesses. The Forest City has been named a better business town. That means Rockford is one of the top 10 cities with the most Better Business Bureau accredited businesses in the region. Dennis Horton with Rockford's BBB chapter says the title proves local entrepreneurs value their customers. Who you're going to trust? Someone who, who is upfront about how they do business and who takes a pledge to do business the right way and to operate in the marketplace to the benefit of both the business and the customer or the one who does not. Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara accepted the Better Business Town plaque at a ceremony this morning. After last year's 4th of July celebrations were stifled due to COVID, many Illinois families want to make up for it tenfold. But if illegal fireworks are part of the plan, firefighters urge you to reconsider. Michelle Rave tells us more about the dangers from the state line. It is very easy to cross over to the Wisconsin border to buy fireworks, but you may have to think twice. 
If you're caught using illegal fireworks here in the state line, you could face some hefty fines. Okay. It's about an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes drive through the country, pretty much. Not used to that. Mauricio Martinez drove with his kids from Gurney, Illinois to Beloit for fireworks. Martinez says the pyrotechnics are always part of his family's 4th of July festivities. Enjoying it being that we're just finished COVID and, and it's uh, was it the same last year? So we want to make sure this year and as kind of make up for last year and really enjoy it with the family. Cornelier Fireworks in Beloit has been serving the community for 50 years. Employee manager Chanel Dietzman says there's a theme for many of their customers. Illinois residents here at this store. And she expects to be busy all weekend. This year it lands on Sunday. So today, tomorrow, it's usually right around that 30th or the 1st of July. Some fireworks are legal, like sparklers and poppers. Others are illegal here in Illinois and can cause serious injuries. Most of the injuries are occurring to our burn injuries or actual tissue destruction because of the explosive nature of fireworks to our hands and, and legs. Rockford Fire Division Chief Matthew Knott says they, along with police officers, will be actively patrolling the streets this weekend, not only to protect yourself, but others who may not be a fan of the loud booms. You know, the perception is that they're not that big of a deal, perhaps, but, but again, it's illegal, and it's a legal activity, and it's very disruptive to neighborhoods and, and people's peace and quiet. And we have great shows that we encourage everybody to go to instead of trying to create their own show. In Rockford, fees start at $750 per ordinance violation. Reporting for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Well, you might be making last minute Independence Day plans now. State line emergency rooms are also preparing for the 4th of July. Hospitals tell us they're bracing for an influx of accidental injuries this weekend. Illegal firework use can lead to the injury or severing of fingers. One doctor with Swedish American Hospital warns fireworks add an element of danger to what should be a fun summer celebration. We as humans use our fingers for pretty much everything that we do and that's the last thing you want to do is end up losing some fingers uh, over a weekend where you could have gone and maybe watched a more professional fireworks show that's probably likely more beautiful anyways. <laughs> Dr. Sharif adds overindulging in alcohol during your celebration also adds to the risk for injury. You can catch a professional fireworks display on the 4th. Join us starting at 8 p.m. right here on WTVO for a celebration of freedom, highlighting special people and programs right here in the state line. Then stick around for the fireworks show starting at 9.30. A beloved program returns to OSF St. Anthony Medical Center. In Rockford, therapy dogs are back. The fluffy volunteers have visited the hospital halls for a decade. The pups were unable to help patients for months due to COVID. Now they look like they're happier than ever to be back to work. Therapy dogs like Ginger, who you see here, and their handlers visit waiting areas, common places, and nursing units at the hospital. Ginger and her human dad hope to visit patient rooms when CDC guidelines allow it. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter expands to Winnebago County. Local 4-H members were divided into their houses this morning. Young wizards planted herbs, created Slytherin slime, crafted their very own wands and quills, and brewed drinks at Potion School. The crash course in wizardry is all about having fun and learning a thing or two. We are doing team building by having them sorted into their various houses. They've been learning different properties about the different plants and different medicinal type of purposes or things that people use them with. And then they've also been doing a lot of measuring and things over in the kitchen. More than 30 kids participated in today's Harry Potter camp. The Illinois community has a direct connection to the state's most famous president. It's a link few other places still have. President Abraham Lincoln once practiced law in the village's courthouse. Tom McIntyre is in Metamora and gives us an inside look. It's this week's Destination Illinois Encore. This is the face of Abraham Lincoln that all America knows, the solemn 16th president. However, this is the face of Abraham Lincoln that Central Illinois knew when he rode the 8th Judicial Circuit. Abraham Lincoln practiced law on the 8th Circuit for over a decade, traveling from courthouse to courthouse on the circuit. This many years later, however, there are only two courthouses in Illinois where Lincoln practiced law, and this in Metamora is one of them. How it survived is a story in itself. Inside the two-story buildings, a small museum of Woodford County history and exhibits describing the 1850s court system. 
On the second floor, the former courtroom and two small chambers representing the time when Lincoln practiced law here. When court was in session, the courthouse was the center of community life. When court was in town, it was a huge form of entertainment for people because they didn't have modern conveniences like radios and TVs um, and, and computers. So everybody came from the area to watch court take place, and lawyers were something of, uh, of celebrities back then. When Metamora ceased being the Woodford County seat in 1896, the courthouse became a community center. Movies and dances were held. In 1921, the former courthouse restored as a local museum. In 1978, the courthouse added to the National Register of Historic Places. Visit here and your image of Lincoln changes from president to a younger man learning the law. The Metamora Courthouse is operated by the Illinois State Historic Preservation Office, open Wednesdays through Saturdays. In Metamora, for Destination Illinois, I'm Tom McIntyre. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Much more refreshing and much more comfortable for us this afternoon and evening. Temperatures today in the upper 70s, low 80s, so still warm. But we've lost some of that humidity that we've had these last couple of days. 81 our temperature in Rockford, Freeport, 82 in Janesville, 79 in Dixon, and 78 our current number now in Rochelle. After a little bit of fog out there early on, we were able to see plenty of sunshine. Just a few fair weather cumulus clouds popping up here for us this afternoon. A live look with our Mercy Isle Sky Track camera out over the Park Hills Golf Course in Freeport. You see the flag whipping around in the wind, that northeasterly wind picking up just a bit, but the wind will subside a bit here as we go through this evening. Our weather watcher numbers for us this evening 81 degrees for Ken and Belvedere, also same temperature for Ben and South Beloit, and Bob checking in this evening with 83. No rain today in these next several days looking to stay fairly dry as a big ridge of high pressure builds in. In fact, clearing out our skies as that secondary cold front came through earlier this morning. That's where we got that push of that northeasterly wind. And while we've had the blue skies out there today, next couple of days you might notice a little more haze to the sky as the fires, wildfires that have been ongoing and have started since the heat really moved into the northwest and well up the west coast of Canada sparked some new wildfires as our jet stream buckles a little bit more to the north that'll actually put that placement of the jet stream uh, overhead these next couple of days. So we might notice a little bit more haze to the sky and that could actually cause a few more colorful or vibrant sunrise and sunsets here going into the weekend. We might not see so much of that for Sunday as we add in a little bit more moisture. Right now I don't think it's going to cause too much of an air quality issue but something we'll keep an eye on uh, as we head through this weekend. The week Weekend, though, we're going to get hot. That should actually say 93 degrees for our high on the 4th of July. But either way you look at it, it is going to be a hot one. 79 for tomorrow afternoon. Comfortable for our Friday. Great day to get out, whatever you have to do. And even though we warm into the upper 80s on Saturday, it is still going to be comfortable because we won't quite yet see that rise in that dew point temperature. But you'll feel the humidity there for Sunday. And even as we head into Sunday evening, while it will be dry, it'll be muggy. And those muggy conditions actually could hinder some of those vibrant colors of the fireworks for Sunday night. Maybe not so much for Saturday if there's anything going on Saturday evening, but precipitation, wind, humidity, temperature, and sky conditions all play a factor in the viewing of those fireworks and the smoke, too, as a result of those going off. So something to kind of consider here going into the weekend. Good news for us, we don't have the rain, but as I mentioned, some of that humidity could kind of dull out some of the vibrant colors of those fireworks. And if our wind stays calm too, you might not see a lot of that smoke clear out. We're going to stay fairly calm here over the next couple of days. In fact, we'll see the sunshine continue. Just a few clouds from time to time, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll keep with those 90s guys as we head into early next week. We'll be dry on Monday. We'll see that change a little bit as a cold front comes in. That'll bring temperatures down just a smidge, and we could see a couple of showers and thunderstorms by mid next week. Now the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. Well, despite the good news yesterday that Giannis's MRI came back clean, the word came in today that he will be ruled out for tonight's game five. We all saw what happened when Giannis was like off the floor in that third Giannis quarter. The Hawks saw an opportunity right. for some momentum and grabbed oh, it by the neck. 
No secret Giannis is the horse that pulls this buggy, but fortunately the Hawks are also dealing with some injuries, specifically to Trey Young and Clint Capella. Series is tied at 2-2. Two to two. This is a must-win game for the Bucks, who will have to do it without their superstar. And it looks like it's... With the Olympics coming up right around the corner, everyone's got their eyes on Simone Biles in Team USA, but let me shift your focus to the Gymnastics Academy of Rockford tumbling and trampoline team who just took home a national title. On the way to a team championship, they also had 15 individual members come in first place in various events. The meet was held in Rochester, Minnesota just a few weeks ago. If these local superstars weren't already impressive enough, they competed with heavy hearts as the former co-owner of the gym, Jim Amat, suddenly passed away back in May. They told me they dedicated their win to him. There's been lots of drama the last couple of days between the two teams, specifically between Lucas Giolito and Josh Donaldson. The Sox got the best of the Twins last night, hitting six home runs in a 13-2 victory. Could they get the sweep on a gorgeous afternoon for some baseball? Carlos Rodon in a bit of trouble with the bases loaded in the first, but he says to Miguel Sano, have you met my Uncle Charlie? The deuce in the dirt checks him up and ends the inning. Then in the second, hanging breaking ball to Brian Goodwin. He doesn't miss it. Sweeps this deep to right center, lands 10 rows up and gives the Sox a one to nothing lead. Then in the third, Yasmani Grandal shoots this past the diving glove at third. Mancata comes in to score. It's two to nothing. The Sox end up getting the sweep. They win this one, eight to five. That's it for sports. So we'll be right back. Skies will stay dry as we go through this evening. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Just some of those fair weather cumulus clouds. Those will fade away. Leave us with a mostly clear sky as we go through the night tonight. Comfortable tonight. You'll wake up to temperatures in the 50s tomorrow morning, up to 79 for tomorrow afternoon, 88 on Saturday. So a quick jump in those numbers. Heading out to City Market tomorrow night, no problems. Anything else going on this weekend, no issues there. You're going to notice, though, the humidity ramping up for Sunday, Monday, as those temperatures climb into the lower 90s. And we'll add in a few showers by mid next week. We're drinking lots of water. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.